Hi, I'm Pierre Escobas from Riviera Macro, and this is a review of the Iris Lens 150mm Dragonfly Macro Lens. The Irix company was kind enough to loan me a unit for more than six months to test and to, to evaluate in many situations. And I'm very grateful for the loan. I've used this lens for more than six months during the summer season uh, here in the, from the French Riviera. And I've put the lens through an extensive testing program. I've taken more than 8,000, probably close to 10,000 pictures with this lens and hours of video too. So I've developed a very good idea of what this lens is capable of. And this is now the, the conclusion review of who, using this for, for such a long time. I want to say first that this is a collaboration. I'm not sponsored by IRIX in any way. I don't own shares in the company or anything else. I'm not paid for doing this review. So that's my independent uh, opinion about, about this uh, beautiful lens. Um, IRIX is a rather new lens company. They have uh, only a few lenses in the catalog, but they're all extremely high quality. Uh, that's the first point about this lens is the build quality. It's amazing. The quality, the construction of uh, quality is absolutely uh, uh, top notch. The lens comes into a nice box. Okay, I'm not doing unboxing, it's useless. Just want to show you the nice box and a very nice uh, hard uh, shell carrying case, uh, which I've never used because I use my photo bag. But anyway, it's a nice packaging, mass packaging for the lens. I myself already own three macro lenses because macro is my main photographic activity. So I have a fairly good idea of what macro lenses should do and on their quality. Um, the first macro lens I've had was this Nikkor 105 uh, millimeter VR. It's, it's an amazing lens. I've had it for more than 10 years. It's traveled with me to every corner of the planet pretty much and it's still in pristine condition and so this lens is incredible but it's showing uh, age a bit now and in particular when it comes to its uh, maximum sharpness. In recent years, about two years ago, I've replaced it, it actually uh, by a Laowa 100mm lens which is absolutely fantastic in terms of quality. Um, it's 100mm also, yes. Um, so that's now my main lens for doing uh, macro photo, not proxy photo. I also own a Sigma 180 macro lens. The optical quality of this is out of this world. It's, it's extremely sharp. Um, it's very good for doing proxy photo. Uh, the thing is, it, as you can see, it's big and it's heavy. So I don't travel with it. So I use this lens less than the, the 100 millimeter, definitely. So the IRIX is 150, which comes kind of in between. So it was very interesting to have a lens that is about the same size as my Nikon, but as a longer focal length. And so presumably better bokeh and different capabilities. To continue and finish about the lens construction, uh, two things about the lens, the Arca, uh, plate compatible uh, tripod color, uh, which is very nice. You need a, a color for the lens like this. At first, I was a bit confused because the shape is different from the ones I, I had with the groove in the middle, but it's indeed um, uh, compatible with the Arca plate uh, holders and uh, it works perfectly fine. Uh, the other thing is, I think, a stroke of genius from the Iris engineers. It's the raised knob that's here on the focusing uh, ring. The focusing ring itself is made of a nice uh, rubber, is easy to turn, very smooth, but this allows you to focus with one finger, just like this, just like this. And it's incredibly useful when you do macro, you know, tripod, or you do video, and you want to actually follow focus your subject, you can do it like this with one hand. Which brings me to the other point about this lens, it's focus. This is a manual focus lens exclusively, no autofocus, which I think in macro is the only option anyway. Um, but uh, the particular point about this uh, lens is that it has an extremely long focus throw. The focus throw is the rotation you need to go from one end to the other of the focusing. And as you can see, this is extremely long and it's 270 degrees out of 360. Um, it's both a, an advantage and sometimes a disadvantage of this lens. We'll come back to that in the different situations which I'm going to talk about.
So before we move on to field applications, let's talk a bit about working distance. In macro photography, working distance means the distance between your subject and the front part of your lens. So the shorter the focal length, say for 100 millimeter, the, the smaller the distance. This Lawa, for example, which is 100 millimeter, is the one with the less working distance of the, these lenses I have. It's only 92 millimeters. Um, so I'm quite close to my subject. This is because the, the front part of the lens is actually recessed in the body. It's, it's about here. The Nikkor, in comparison, it's about the same focal length, has a working distance of 143 millimeters. Um, so that's very good. Uh, this one allows me to be a distance from my subject, especially if the subject is shy. So with a 150 millimeter lens, like the Irix, I expect it to gain a bit, and yeah, I do. Um, the Irix has a working distance of 171 millimeters, so it's about uh, 30 millimeters more than the Nikkor. Uh, it's not much of a gain though, so that's not the best uh, selling point about this lens. Um, it, it has other qualities, but the working distance is not really exceptional. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's uh, optically what you should expect because this one has a working distance of a 214 millimeters. It's a 180 millimeter lens, so it's superior, but there's not much of a gain when you go from 100 to 150 to 180. Um, so that's quite comparable. In the end, doesn't make a lot of difference uh, on, unless you have an extremely shy subject, but three, three centimeters more or less between those don't make much of a difference. In order to be able to give uh, my conclusions and a good evaluation of the lens, I put it through different scenarios this summer and we're going to go through each of them. I'm going to take you to three main scenarios in which I use this lens and figured out what its strong points and weak points may be. The first scenario, number one, is actually chasing insects, uh, trying to get macro or proxy photo of insects in natural light with flash, etc. And the first images I took with the lens weren't sharp. And I thought, well, this, you know, the lens is not very, very sharp, not uh, focusing is not that good, or the quality of the lens is not great. It has nothing to do with that. The lens is perfectly sharp. Um, it's, it's got nothing to do. Uh, it's, it has to do with the focusing. The focus ring is so precise, the focus throw is long, that it means with a very shallow depth of field, it's very hard to achieve focus, especially on the eye of an insect, and especially if you go, uh, as you go up in magnification. So it makes this lens a little difficult to use in uh, situations where the subject is moving, uh, the subject is small, and it's very, very hard to, to have a lot of uh, shots in focus. I've experienced this in a number of situations now. It's been reported in, in other reviews, actually. Um, I found that the number of keeper shots uh, in, in situations like here, for example, chasing a dragonfly, would be very, very low. Um, it takes time to properly focus manually, then the insect might have flown away. And even so, if there's a little bit of breeze, the insect will move slightly and it will go out of focus because the depth of field is very, very shallow. So it took me a while to figure that out. Um, then I could improve my, my uh, keeper rate by uh, carefully uh, using focus, I mean, techniques where I would be very still, I would wait until there was no wind, etc. The real game changer was when I switched from DSLR, uh, my, my Nikon D100 doesn't have focus peaking, I switched to a hybrid camera, um, I have a Nikon Z6 now, and it has focus peaking, and that's a totally change uh, of the situation, total change of situation. Um, with the focus peaking, you can achieve focus much more easily and much more quickly. So after, after that point, it became much more enjoyable to use the lens for proxy photo and as you can see I was able to get a number of very very nice shots in different situations even when the insects were moving. I've used the lens with different accessories so there's no particular issue there. I've used extension rings, I've used the Raynox uh, close-up lenses. The only accessory I wasn't able to use directly was my multiplier from Nikon because the front lens of the multiplier um, doesn't fit into the back of the Irix lens so that's 
nothing to do with the the RX, but it's just a matter of construction and but that's not a big issue in macro photography so i would say this lens in my opinion is better suited to situations uh, where you'd be doing proxy photography you'd be shooting flowers large insects katydids dragonflies butterflies where it will give you more dis distance to work and also it will give you wonderful bokeh so my conclusion about, uh, from scenario number one is this that's where i enjoyed the most using the lens is chasing uh, these uh, big insects in in the morning light for example Scenario number two is focus stacking. I've used the lens extensively for focus stacking in the summer of 2020, and actually I've done a full video on the stacking of orchids, uh, which you can see on the YouTube channel. The lens is absolutely perfect for doing stacks because it ho it's got this very long focus throw and therefore uh, an incredible focusing accuracy, which allows you to stack 40 to 50 images without a problem and have a proper um, stacking uh, step for your images. I've done it handheld, I've done it on tripod, and my results were absolutely excellent. My focus stacks actually represent most of the images I've done with this lens during the season and I'm extremely happy with the results. So this lens is at the moment, without a doubt, the best tool I have for doing focus stacks uh, in the field, especially of larger subjects such as flowers and, and large insects. So scenario number three is macro videography. Uh, this has been an essential thing to do for me this summer because I've tried to develop my skills in that field and improve the quality of my video, especially in macro. In macro video, it's very difficult to keep subjects in focus because the depth of field is so narrow. Uh, it's true for stills, but it's even truer for video where the subjects are moving all the time. The winning combination this year has really been the Nikon Z6, which has focus peaking, with the 150mm IRIX lens. So in macro video, you have to follow mostly moving subjects. And I've tried handheld. I must say the results haven't been great. But on tripod, definitely I've got very, very nice sequences because with the very, very precise focusing accuracy of this lens, I was able to track my subject and do even a handheld focus rack. I've got great sequences of moving butterflies, of, of caterpillars eating uh, plants, and I'm very happy with the results. So have a look at the following sequences so you get an idea of what I've done. So in conclusion, I love this lens and I'm very happy that I can get to use it a bit longer. Um, the pros are construction, bokeh, sharpness and the versatile use of this lens in many situations and the focus accuracy, that's the main, that's the main point. The cons, well, the ability to get proper focus and I think it needs to be used with focus speaking absolutely. The more I use this lens, the more I liked it and the more I wanted to do with it and the more I wanted to keep it. And uh, that's, I think, probably uh, the, the best conclusion I can have. I'd like to thank the people at Eric's Lens for the vote of confidence, for the loan, and for extending the loan so I can keep using the lens for, in particular, for macro video. So this is uh, the fall now, we're in November, so a few subjects, but definitely both during the winter and the next season, I'm looking forward to doing much more with this lens. Stay tuned because it will show in other videos.